morning. Welcome to the First Congregational Church, where everyone's someone and Jesus is Lord. It's been an interesting couple of weeks around here lately, hasn't it? The positivity rate of the coronavirus is skyrocketing. We've had an election that seems to go on forever. Uh, I, myself, have been quarantined for the last two weeks, so I've had an opportunity to read and to pray and to indulge in one of my guilty pleasures, and that is watching the election results come in. Um, I usually stay up all night and watch them, and, and that's been fun. I've enjoyed that quite a bit. Uh, though I have to say, um, from what I see in the news and on my news feed, it seems to be that not everyone enjoys that as much as I do. In fact, many people uh, have found it very stressful and, and to be quite a test in their lives. In fact, I was surprised to learn that the number one Googled Bible verse on Election Day uh, was James chapter 1, verses 13 through 15. Uh, that verse, that, that passage, has to do with testing and how to deal with it and where does it come from. So I thought that this morning what we would do is we would just kind of break that, that passage down a little bit and look to see in particular how it affects our lives today and in a time of coronavirus and uh, still contested election and, and how we as Christians ought to deal with that and to, um, to understand what's going on. So let's just take a peek at that right now. Uh, James chapter one, starting in verse 13 says, let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. So the first thing we have to understand is, is the temptation that we have doesn't come from God. Now that doesn't mean that the, the things that are happening in the world don't come from God, or at least that God doesn't allow them. Um, these words can also, the word tempted can also mean tested. Um, but the fact is, what happens in the world is not where temptation comes from. Um, a lot of things are happening, whether it's coronavirus or election or, or other things in your lives. Um, and you might feel that you are being tested by God. But that's, James says, no, it, that doesn't come from God. Um, but the temptation or the, the, the tendency to sin actually comes from our heart. The, the temptation is not that we have to deal with outside influences. The temptation is how we will deal for, with them. For instance, with the election this week, I have seen so much anger uh, from some people about um, the way the election has gone or how many people voted uh, in one way or the other. It's been, uh, it's been disappointing, to be honest with you. And I have, to, I have to say, first of all, I thank you for those of you uh, watching from uh, First Congregational Church. Uh, I think you have done very well. I, I've been kind of watching your social media and I've seen nothing but good things. So thank you for that. Um, I know that that was something that we were concerned about was how we would, how we would react to the election stresses that might come. And you have done very well. I wish that were uh, worldwide. I wish that were for Christians all across America. But that's not what I see. I see people giving into temptation and reacting in anger or arrogance, I've seen hateful words, I've seen gloating words. Um, these are words that are, are not good. Uh, they are people giving in to the temptation to sin concerning the events that come into their lives. Um, I'm sure you've seen those too, so I don't really need to go into them in depth. Uh, but the truth is there's, there's been a whole lot of hurtful words uh, coming out of even the Christian community over the past couple days. So the, the question is, if the, if the temptation isn't coming from the election or from the coronavirus or from other things in our life, where does this temptation come from? And again, James continues in verse 14, he says, but each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. In other words, what he's saying is sin isn't about what comes at us. Sin is how we react to it. Sin, it comes from inside our hearts. We still have a, a sinful nature in us. And, and that if we allow that sinful nature to dominate, then that is where sin comes from. Jesus, speaking with the Pharisees, uh, said something similar. Uh, they were um, firing on him because his disciples weren't following the law as far as hand washing and washing cups and dishes to be pure before God. That was a part of their custom, um, how they were supposed to behave. And they weren't doing it. Jesus' disciples and the Pharisees were very upset about that. So Jesus said to them, hey, it's not what comes in that it defiles a man. It is what comes out of the heart. 
And so in the same way, it's how we react to the outside world that causes us sin. And of course, we have those desires in our heart. We have the desire to have our own way. We have the desire to look good among people. We have the desire to to get whatever it is we want. And when those desires are met with something that goes against them, sometimes it causes sin, or at least it can always have sin. That's what temptation is, is the desire to sin, the desire to do what is not pleasing to God. Um, And so I've seen uh, people reacting with anger and lashing out at people who disagree with them. I've seen other people um, gloating when, and react, act, reacting with arrogance and um, putting people down. Um, I've seen uh, just insulting words thrown about um, because of the sin in our hearts and the way that people have reacted to, in particular, the election results. And of course, the same thing can be true of coronavirus. You can have um, sinful response to that as well, whatever that might look like in your life. So it's, a, it's the desires of the heart that cause us to sin. And what does that look like? Well, again, James goes on in chapter 15. He says, then desire, that is the desire of our hearts, when it has conceived, gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. So we have a a desire, and maybe it's a good and normal desire. Maybe your candidate was um, the one that you wanted to to win, and so you had that desire that the candidate would win. Um, And then uh, if you are a Republican, perhaps it looks like President Trump is not going to win, and so that that made you angry. So that uh, desire conceived that sin of anger. Uh, And then when it's conceived, it brings forth death. What does that mean? What does it mean when we say that sin, when conceived, brings forth death? Well, the sin is in your heart. The sin is the, the anger and the, and the bad feelings and the desire. And the death is what happens as the result of our acting out in that sin. I read an article this week about somebody, and this was had to do with the last election, the 2016 election, and President Trump won. And, and this person had a a break in their family. The the family, for the last four years, hasn't spoken to one another. The the man who was writing the article was not invited to his sister's wedding because of politics, because of the the sin in both of their hearts, perhaps, that was acting out in division, in death. And it caused a death in the relationship between this man and his sister. I know that that's happened on people in my newsfeed as well, where where people have blocked people, or people have um, unfriended people. Um, and that's just social media. Uh, that's, a, that's a minor thing, but, but it's causing all kinds of hurt and anger um, among the body of Christ when different sides act out, when they allow the sin that has been conceived in their heart to act out with angry words and hurtful, hurtful words, uh, perhaps gloating on victory or accusing of fraud or, or whatever it might be that sin that has that is acted out brings forth death the loss of relationship between people who otherwise ought to be brothers and sisters in Christ and working together for the glory of God so one thing that the the death uh, that sin brings forth is this loss of relationship the other thing it brings forth is a loss of reputation uh, we are to be ambassadors for Christ we are the the when people see us, they should see little Christs. That's what Christian means. They, we are, the, in some cases, the only representative of Christ that people have. And if we are acting out in anger or bitterness or gloating or whatever that sinful desire brings out in us, then we are tarnishing the name of Christ. We are keeping people from seeing his love and his grace because of our sinfulness, the sin in our heart that is coming out in these actions. Um, And of course, when that happens, not only do we have the death of relationship and we have the death of reputation, but we have the death of our ability to share the love of Christ with other people. If we have severed a relationship or if we have ruined our reputation, then we no longer have the opportunity to share God's love with other people, with at least those other people. And that's our mission in life. So we we have sin coming from the desires of our heart which when conceived, it becomes sin, that anger or that uh, gloating or jealousy or whatever it might be, and that comes to action, which brings forth death, this separation. Um, 
So what do we do about that? I mean, uh, James talks about these things, but he doesn't really give us a, an answer. But of course, we know the answer. The answer is Jesus. In fact, the answer is almost always Jesus, isn't it? Um, as we look to him, as he, we remember that he is in charge, uh, and that it's not about us, it's about him, uh, then hopefully um, that anger can, can subside and those actions can become loving and graceful actions once again. So when you think about this, if you've been feeling anger, if you've been feeling sinful emotion coming from something in your life, whether it's the election or the coronavirus or something else, um, why don't you take some time now to just ask the Lord to heal you of that sin, to fill you with, your, with his spirit and allow you to know his presence in a way that brings you comfort. Sin is already taken care of. Um, all we have to do is choose to seek God first and to seek to serve him in our thoughts and in our hearts. Jesus changes our hearts. That's where the heart change comes from. But he, he's gentle. He waits for us to allow that to happen. So why don't you ask him to bring heart change into your life, to get rid of the anger, to get rid of the bitterness, to get rid of the, the gloating and the arrogance and the self-righteousness that might be lurking in there. Help him, ask him to help you know if those things are there and then to remove them from you so that when the desire is gone, then the sin is gone and then the death is gone. And all of that is due to Jesus Christ and his spirit working in our lives. Will you do that this week? Will you take some time just to pray and ask the Lord to move in your heart and to bring a, a, a change in your life that will bring his word and restore those relationships in places they might have been broken? Of course, then the, the onus is on you that once the, your sin is gone, to reach out to those you might have hurt, uh, to confess, to apologize, and to make it right. That's the hard part. But again, you can do that as the Holy Spirit works in you. So let's take a moment and let's pray and let's, at, let's ask the Lord to move in our, our lives for his glory. Let's pray together. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you that you have moved in our hearts to take away sin, to take away the anger or the bitterness or the self-righteousness or the gloating. Father, forgive us if we have been partaking in those things. Help us to to know your love and your grace, and then help us to know how to share that love and grace with people who have hurt us or people who we might have hurt. Help us, Father, to be your ambassadors in spirit and in truth. Help us be the light that you're calling us to be, even in times of division, in times of trouble, in times where we might be tempted not to be the people you want us to be. Thank you, Lord, that you make reconciliation possible. Help us to live that out in our lives this week. Amen. God bless you. Hope to see you soon.